Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. After doing the, the database design of different entities, now we are again with this architecture because now we will start writing the API gateway in the Node.js and the Nest.js services. But what I want like, I want a little tweak on this, okay? So what do we have in this, the whole services? It's all request and reply, right? And we are using these different microservices, even the GraphQL API gateway will use these REST connectors to just talk to these services, okay? Now, what I want is, that is fine, we have a different microservices talking to a database and giving us the data. I want to just make it more event-driven and asynchronous in nature. Let's say you put an order, right? Somehow something wrong happened in the service, your order has not even been placed or has been placed but no proper notifications and no proper communication down to the other entities has happened, right? So our system will break in this particular case. So what do we have is, we have two set of APIs. Like one API is which are just giving us the data and another API is which are triggering the actions and the commands, okay? So we will understand it in the different terminologies, the APIs which are doing the query. That is called a GraphQL query. APIs which are performing action, update, delete, create, those are called mutations. And further from these microservices, these will generate the events okay like order service order has been created now what i can do is i can actually create the event order created with all the respective data with it and i can publish this to a rabbitmq let's say we have just a rabbitmq container and we publish this to a rabbitmq okay now we have created the order that is an action and order created event we are raising and that order created event we are putting in the RabbitMQ. There will be a listener, you can say, a one common subscriber to this MQ. I mean, we are not talking about the scale where you have everything upscaled. Okay, this is like a consumer. And here we will write our business logic. That business logic will do nothing but the based on the event, it will perform the action. Okay, this is like a event driven where you don't know the consumer, you don't know the order service. Any particular service can push the event created from the command. Okay, I mean, I'm not using, I'm using these wrong terms, command and the events. So command has happened, you have, you have created the order, now you are actually raising the event and that event can be stored here. The consumer now will know what is the event type order created, uh, delivery notified, right? or the payment updated, payment done, all these kind of order. That will actually handled by one common service or one common logic that will do the update in our database system. Okay, this is our database. That can be a Postgres or the MySQL. Okay, this will further downstream do the updates. And here, once the update is done, let's say you put an order, right? Order has been created. But now, down the stream, how would you notify, okay, the, the, uh, the restaurant has accepted your order, delivery boy has assigned, your order is like coming in 9 minutes, 5 minutes, something like that, right? So all these events, so order has been created, we have assigned a consumer to read that payload from the event queues, and then we are processing it, right? Now, there will be a listener service, which will be talking to one pusher service, I mean, there is an asynchronous event messaging service. Let's call we are using, we can use the, the pusher and that pusher will keep notifying our front end about the updates which you are, which we are making to the service. Okay, I will move this to here and this will point to our front end service. Okay, this is how, this is just a structure which I just thought of. This is the implementation is really challenging for this, right? So we divided the whole sequence of the APIs into the queries, which will just read the, okay, give me the restaurant list, give me my previous orders, give me my, the current order, all these things, right? The another thing is command, where you are raising the, when we are doing the payment, when you are submitting the order, adding items to the cart, right? So let's say you are actually keep adding the items to the cart. That will be the simple, you added the item to the cart, cart created event and the entity will be updated. We don't need events for that, right? But everything can be asynchronous. 
at least the commands at least the actions which are like create update delete and based on those updates on successful delivery of those events till the database we can raise some asynchronous event that will notify our browser okay the order has been accepted the delivery guy has assigned and we can actually because this is nothing but a websocket event which will be raised to our front end client and because this is a registered client authentic authorized client this client will only receive these kind of messages and you can actually track the your delivery when it is going to come who is the delivery guy the number information all the thing right so the additional uh, enhancement we have done is introducing this asynchronous mqs it can be rabbit mq sqs sns and sqs or anything right this is using amqp protocol right we just send a message to this there will be a consumer consumer based on the event type order created uh, payment done the cart item added we will update the database right and i mean i'm not talking about the cqrs event sourcing and all these things otherwise it will again will be complicated and for read queries like these are restaurant services right they will be reading the data from somewhere so that is nothing but this database common database we have so from there you can get all the information okay so this is we talked a lot about the architecture now it's time to pen down and start writing the code for the api gateway and the nscs services okay uh, thanks everyone